Over the years, I've come to terms with the fact that sailing the world involves a very natural ebb and flow between actually sailing and working on the boat. The ability to go on these adventures is a hard-won feat, one that takes days, weeks, months, or even years of preparation. Hopefully soon we'll be out back on the open water, sailing and seeing the world. Now, Atticus 2 is in great shape, but all boats are constantly in need of some kind of maintenance. UV from the sun, salt water, fresh water, metal corrosion, wood rot, humidity, long periods of immobility mixed with momentarily gigantic forces. Hold on, we're gonna get a shock load! All conspire to turn any actively cruising sailboat into a loose cluster of breaking down systems. There it goes. Yep. Power's out. I've often used the analogy that a cruising sailboat is a bomb with a lit fuse. Every now and then we need to splice on a bit more fuse or else the whole thing is just gonna blow. But this time around, we're going to have Isabella with us. So in addition to boat maintenance, I'm gonna be working on some improvements that will help me single hand the boat with minimal help from Desiree. So now it's time for us to double up on our dock lines, stow our snorkel gear and hiking shoes, and bust out the tools so we can keep this bomb from exploding just a little bit longer. This is always an interesting time for me because it's that moment when I'm transitioning into kind of like a project mode. And if you look at my entire project list, it's super long. It's so long that it will probably never, ever, ever, ever get complete. But ultimately, there's only a handful of projects that are essential for me to do. And so that's why my very first project is not a very sexy one, but is very important. And that is sealing this shower. Now, I actually spent some time sealing this shower before because we had some water leaking through and doing some damage to this bulkhead here, but it didn't completely fix the problem. And so what I realized is that before I sealed the bottom corner of this bulkhead in the shower, but I didn't seal this wood trim here. And I think what's happening is there's a little bit of a gap here, a little tiny crack between the trim and the bulkhead itself, and water is able to get in there and then seep all the way down and then get to the bottom of the bulkhead where it kind of absorbs into the end grain of the plywood and has been doing a little bit of damage. So long story short, I'm gonna prep this entire joint here and seal it. Right, buddy, we're gonna seal. This is your cock gun, all right? So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to squeeze this in a way where you get a nice, even pressure over time. Are you paying attention at all? So a lot of the time, the skill of sanding something like this, like a little obscure corner, is just finger dexterity. You know what I mean? Like getting your fingers just in the crevice and holding the sandpaper in just the right way. That's one perk perhaps of having a kid on board. Tiny little fingers, just put them to work, get in there. What do you think, bud? You think it's gonna work? I think it might be wishful thinking, but. We'll see. Give it a couple years, come back to us, see how that's going. Okay, well, I finished the caulking, so we're all set in here. Desiree is not very happy about it. Gonna have to go check on her, but at least this project's done and we're off to a good start with these boat projects. So now that we've got a baby, I really don't know when we'll be on the move again. It's hard for me to say. It's probably gonna be sometime in the next couple of months, but when we do come to leave Malta, we're gonna be sailing for Sicily. And so I've been brushing up on my Italian using Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. Since we're constantly on the move, the most important thing for us when it comes to learning languages is that we learn what is most important as quickly as possible. And that's what Babbel's great at. Phrases like prego, como stai, permesso. Babbel focuses on teaching what actually matters, real world practical conversations. And the lessons are designed by real language teachers to prepare you to converse about travel, business, relationships, and more. Hai visto quanti gusti? Hai visto quanti gusti? 
Nice. Learning a new language is the perfect goal for 2023. So click on the link in the description below or scan this QR to get 60% off of your subscription. And be sure to let us know in the comments what language you wanna learn. So ever since we left Washington, North Carolina, which was six months ago now, which it's crazy because it feels like it was years ago, we have not since then plugged into shore power at a dock. We have been living entirely off of our batteries, off of our solar panels, our alternator on the engine, off of the inverter that we have. So that whole electrical install that we did back in Maine has been working really, really well. But now that it's starting to get winter here in Malta, the sun isn't getting very high in the sky anymore and the hours of daylight are getting shorter and shorter every single day. And so now it's starting to get to the point where the solar panels aren't keeping up with our electrical usage. And plus, as it's starting to get chillier and colder here, we're starting to use more hot water, which takes up a lot of electricity. And we're gonna start using our diesel heater here pretty shortly. But since we're in a marina, I mean, the simple solution is just plug the boat into shore power and get electricity from the dock. But we can't do that here because here in Europe, they have a very different kind of electricity than we have back in the States. So the electrical system on Atticus is all 110 volt at 60 hertz, which is the US standard. Here in Europe, it's 220 volt at 50 hertz. So very different. Those two kinds of electricity don't play nice together. Now there are a lot of ways that we can solve this problem, but most of the solutions involve large expensive pieces of electrical equipment that we just don't really have the space for. And plus, we don't really know how long we're gonna be in the med for. So the solution I've decided to go with is to just install a relatively small battery charger that will pull electricity from the dock and use that to charge the batteries. Now, as I said before, we are kind of running out of space on this boat for electrical equipment, but I did find kind of a random little storage space near the nav station that we're not really using it for anything. It's a little bit hard to access, a little bit hard to get into, but I should have just enough space to mount that battery charger and wire it without much of a problem. Okay, cool. Well, that's in. So the next step is I'm gonna put a new breaker in the breaker panel up here at the electrical switchboard. Basically, that'll make it so that I can shut down the power to this battery charger when I need to. Also, if there's any sort of crazy electrical fault on the AC side, that breaker will trip. Okay, so next step is we need to mount this fuse holder. This is gonna be the fuse for the cable running from the battery charger to the actual batteries or the, the charging bus itself. So that's gonna go down here in the electrical hole. We're starting to run out of space for more stuff down there. We've covered all the bulkheads in every spot with electrical equipment at this point, but luckily this is pretty small, so I think we can find a space. Oh. <laughs> My shoulder is like, neck is cramping up. Oh, it's tough being old, dude, let me tell you. Yeah. Emergency banana. I can feel it fixing the problem. Okay, no time for this whole banana. Time to get to work. All right, so next I need to install the receptacle that the new European shore power is actually going to plug into. So that's this bad boy. Now, luckily this boat was built with two receptacles for American shore power. We only use one of those receptacles, so this should be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna remove the one that we don't use and then replace it with this one. Well, I thought that this thing was installed or mounted using screws, but it looks like it's through bolted. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to climb into the cockpit locker. So I gotta remove all the stuff out of the cockpit locker. Well, I just discovered some kind of a leak down there. Looks like it's associated with our hot water heater. There's a dripping happening up here. You can see right here, there's these super thin streams of water. Yeah, one's hitting my finger right now. And it's shooting out from this joint here and it's hitting this ducting, and that's what's creating that drip there. Okay, gonna have to deal with that now. The PEX fittings and hoses that connect all of our freshwater system has both benefits and drawbacks. It's definitely more prone to little leaks like this one, but man, is it quick and easy to fix a leak when it does happen. Okay, 
Okay, I think that did it, let's see. Hey bud, can you turn on the water pressure? No leak. So, back to the project I was doing before I started doing this project. Okay, where are you? Okay, so the old one is popped out. So I'm just gonna remove those wires off of this receptacle, wire them to the new receptacle, and then seal and install the new receptacle. All right, well, I just ran into a little bit of a hiccup. It looks like the hole that the old receptacle fit into is a little bit too small for the new receptacle. So I'm gonna need to make it bigger. The bummer about that is, you know, the way I would do that is to use a hole saw, but a hole saw, if you don't have any material for the drill in the center to actually dig into, that's what keeps the hole saw steady. So if you already have a hole and you wanna make it bigger, it's actually not easy to do. I've got some scrap plywood, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these receptacles as a pattern to drill holes in that plywood and then mount it using screws on the other side of the deck and then that way I'll have some wood material to actually drill into to stabilize the hole saw so that it will cut a nice hole without gouging the heck out of the deck. Well of course I don't have a hole saw that's the right size. I'm gonna have to find a hardware store and buy a new hole saw, but it's getting late in the day, so I'm gonna have to pack up for today, admit defeat. You know, that's how these projects go. You just keep encountering one obstacle after another, and I'm like, I can I can deal with this obstacle, and then you find a tool or you find some material and you deal with it, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you finally get to one obstacle that you're like, damn it, I can't fix this one. Ugh, almost had victory today, but lived to fight another day. So I lucked out and it looks like they had exactly what I needed on the island. Malta actually, for being in Europe, it's not super easy to get anything that I need. Everything needs to be shipped in here. So a lot more mom and pop shops and going from one store to the next. So time to drill a big hole in the boat. Let's see if I aligned that right or not. I got a feeling I screwed it up. <laughs> okay, that's definitely a big enough hole. That's good. Yeah, it definitely looks like the mounting holes or the bolt holes are not perfect. I'll just have to drill these out a little bit, which is not a big deal. Dude, this receptacle thing is just killing me, man. It's so cheap, it's so lightly made, the material's crap, and like trying to assemble it is just ridiculous. This screw is supposed to go inside of it to connect the front piece to the back piece to the middle piece. It's not long enough to get to the hole within the blue tube bit. Ugh, anyway, I'm gonna need pliers. Let's see, do I have any in here? That might work. When it comes to sealing deck hardware, my go-to material is butyl tape. It's a lot less messy than other liquid sealants and it doesn't actually cure, so there's no real rush like with most other sealants. It's not ideal for all applications, but for something like this, I think it works great. Okay, but so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and tighten the bottom outboard screw. This is another one of those situations where it's just trying to place the nut just right with my fingertips. Okay, cool. That's it. We're in. All right. 
right, so Desiree and Issa are taking a nap. And So without waking up Desiree or Issa, my goal now is to find out where the wires for the old second shore power terminate and to rewire them to the new breaker that I installed. Okay, so this is the black for shore power two. This is the white for shore power two. So I'm gonna disconnect both of those from this switch and then move them over to here, which is our breakers that I'm gonna use for our 220 electrical system. is another one of those situations where a lot of what's gonna take the time to do this project is the stupid like unscrewing that I gotta do of this screw with the tips of my fingers because this giant cable bundle is just right in my way and I can't move it. <clears throat> okay, and that's the other thing that takes a long time is when you drop that stupid little screw. Okay, so I'm glad that so far this has worked because this saved me a lot of time not having to snake new wire through. Now, the one issue that I'm having with this setup right now is you can see this is the common power bar for the 110 system. So this is 110 volts at 60 hertz. The cables here that are coming in to this breaker are going to be 220 volts at 50 hertz. And so the issue that I'm having is that this power bar is super, super close to this hot piece of metal on the breaker. I'm assuming that if somehow those two bits of metal short circuited or touched each other, that like the whole boat would explode. I actually don't know. We might rip a hole in the time space continuum. I actually have no idea what would happen. The encounter could create a time paradox, the results of which could cause a chain reaction that would unravel the very fabric of the space time continuum and destroy the entire universe. Now, I'm sure there are official rules that when you have two different types of electricity, two different voltages on a circuit panel like this, that you're supposed to separate them a certain distance in certain ways. I'm gonna come clean. I don't know what those rules are. I'm just gonna do what makes sense to me. I'm sure if Nigel Calder is watching this, that he's going to be mad at me about this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my multi-tool here and I'm going to cut this end right here off of this common power bar so that I'll have a gap of about two circuit breakers between the 110 system and then the 220 system. Okay, let's uh, see if I can do this and not electrocute myself and especially not wake up Desiree or the baby. I feel like I'm about to get yelled at. All right, well, the multi-tool didn't wake up the baby, but she did eventually wake up. Are you awake? I just changed her. Oh my her. gosh. Oh, she's like, we need to fix the electrical system. Are you being a cutie? These brief moments where she's not crying, she's like, I want to so badly. The world is such an injustice. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to electrical projects like this, they always involve two distinct phases. The first phase is where we mount and install all the components, but phase two is where we just connect all of those components together. Phase two always feels like it takes forever. Crimping butt splices and ring terminals, heating up heat shrink, running wires and tightening connections. But although it takes forever, it's also the most exciting part since with each crimp and splice, I get that much closer to turning on the new system for the first time. Okay, so we're just about done here. Now I need to wire the charge. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Brain is starting to not work. The last step is going to be to wire the battery charger to the charge bus down here in the electrical compartment. So on the 12 volt side here, I've got to wire the positive wire to the fuse holder and then from the fuse holder to the charge bus. And I've got to get the negative wire to the negative bus. Hey bud, I got to kill the power to the boat. You ready to go dark? Yep. Okay, here we go. There it goes. Out. All right, coming back. Boom. Cool, it is 7.15 at night and I'm all set. So I just gotta find the shore power cable here in the quarter bird. <laughs> Somewhere buried back up. There it is. 
So let's just make sure this breaker is off. Which, yep, breaker is off. Let's plug this bad boy in. Damn it. Ugh, I think these are 32 amp sockets and our plugs are 16 amp. I'm gonna call Grand Harbor Marina. It's 720, they're open till eight, so I'm just gonna see if they have an adapter. Hey, yeah, this is Jordan from Atticus. Yeah, do you guys have any uh, 16 amp to 32 amp adapters? Oh, nice, okay, perfect. Great, okay, see you here in a minute. Nice, all right, so they said they'll be here in 10 minutes. Oh, fingers crossed, man. I'm gonna continue to plug this in on the other side then. Hey guys. Right. Oh, bingo. Okay, nice. So we're hooked up and everything. Okay, switch your one. Okay. Go for it. I checked the bar before. Okay, thank you. Okay, moment of truth. There are a lot of things that could go wrong. <laughs> like so many. So I'm gonna turn this on and the way I know if it's working is that battery monitor will read a positive. There we go. Yes, it is working. Okay. Yep, we're all okay. set. Thanks good. a lot, guys. Okay, we're all good. We got electricity, baby. We did it. We got electricity. Well, this is definitely one big difference with doing boat projects with a baby on board is normally I finish up late like this and it's like I'm done and I can eat dinner and relax. But now that is not the case. For instance, you just dropped your pacifier. You gotta go wash this. Thanks, bud. Yeah, so there's just gonna be a lot more baby stuff going on tonight before we go to bed. <laughs>